Hello guys, so welcome to the video. Um, today we're going on a bit of a cross-country adventure to take Fletch to um, a veterinary specialist. I was referred to him by my own vet um, and this is basically just the ongoing trying to figure out um, what's happening with Fletch. Um, still trying to work out if there's something um, linked back to his head shakers because we've never found anything. If you're new here, um, you might not be kind of familiar with this story. You can go and watch. I'll link the video down below when he got diagnosed. Um, but basically, Fletch was diagnosed with head shakers over summer. Um, there's a lot more to the story than that, but I'm just going to leave it there because probably a lot of you already know kind of what's up. I have sort of mixed emotions about filming this video, to be honest, because part of me is just quite hopeful that maybe today we're going to find out what's been happening with him. And then, of course, the other part of me is a bit nervous about today because you never know what you're going to find. Um, and you just hope that it's something that maybe is an easy fix. But knowing Fletch, probably not. <laughs> so, yeah, this is basically the next steps and fingers crossed, you know, maybe we have a solution today. So, we'll see. But I've got to go and grab him now. I've got the float on the back. I better hurry or I'm going to be late. Okay, Mr. Fletch, it's time to go. You ready? Oh my God, you're so muddy. Fletch. I've got loose and hay for you at the stables. Yeah, yum. All right, I've got him. He doesn't know what's in store for him just yet, poor boy. Hopefully he's gonna get on the float. It's very clean, but it has been a while. Probably should have practiced, but all good. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna give him a very quick hose and then we'll be good to go. Come on, Mr. Grass Eater. Fletch has arrived everyone. Oh my god, what a drive. He was so good the whole way. It was really scary because I was all on my own too. But he was an angel. Mm -hmm. You're trying to nibble your neighbors. I don't think you're supposed to eat that hay either. Okay. We're just settling in while we wait for the vet. Give me kisses to your neighbors again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so funny. I should have bought you salt leak. Oh, more kisses. Mm -hmm. Fletch, you're just being so friendly. You're being such a good boy. He's relaxed really quickly. Surprisingly. He's finished his exam. He's just trying to wake up right now. Still a little sedated. He thinks he's ready to go though. Mm -hmm. You ready? You want to go home? Mm -hmm. You ready to go? Hey guys. So I am actually not sure exactly where I left you guys off in the last little section of the video. That was, I want to say two and a half months ago um, that we had our initial consults for Fletcher. Um, since then I also had to send some videos to the vet basically showing um, Fletch biting down on a carrot um, on like each side of his mouth to try and like uh, gauge like pain um, to see if he was like uncomfortable and it definitely showed that he was a little bit uncomfortable so basically the vet was saying if your horse can't bite cleanly into a carrot and just snap it immediately um, then that can often be a sign of a problem because they should be able to easily break a carrot um, in one go and Fletch just kind of he did it but he kind of struggled a little bit um, so I sent that off um, and then the vet took that and all of the x-rays took them um, to see another specialist as well who also looked at them um, to try and figure out what the next steps would be for us um, and after them going through everything basically Fletch does need to have an operation um, I'm going to be taking him to the rehabilitation slash like hospital um, today um, so he's got to go on the float he's got to go tonight and then he spends the night there and then first thing tomorrow morning is when he's going to be having his surgery 
Um, but basically, um, God, I'm going to try and explain this in the best way that I possibly can. I may not get it 100% right. Basically, what the dentist found with the x-rays is that Fletch had a couple of holes in some of his teeth. Um, very, very fine holes, um, sort of going up through the center of the tooth, which you couldn't really see or you couldn't see um, unless um, you were kind of x-raying them um, and looking at them very, very closely. Um, and he was actually, this is a little bit graphic, but he was able to actually push a, ne a little needle up into one of them just to show how deep it had actually gone. Um, and it was quite deep. So number one, that was distressing, but number two, it explains so much. And it was like, cool, so now we kind of know um, what we're working with and why there have been issues um, with his mouth um, a few months ago now. Um, but unfortunately, it looks like Fletch also might have the beginnings of a degenerative tooth disease um, because in general his teeth just didn't look great to the dentist on the x-ray um, and really the only thing you can do for that sort of thing is just to have the teeth pulled um, so that is what is happening to Fletch tomorrow um, he is going to have three of his top incisors pulled um, so the thing is with horses is that they can actually have um, no teeth at the front of their mouth whatsoever as long as they have a really good back teeth that are intact so if they have good molars um, it means they can still grind down their feet and they're the most important ones everyone keeps reassuring me that horses bounce back very very quickly from this type of operation apparently it barely affects them at all and a lot of them will go back to eating like completely as per normal within like a day or two um, and they said like even in the first week um, they seem totally fine and normal so he's probably gonna have a bit of a funny look going on but at this point I'm just really hoping that this is gonna be our answer to maybe why he started head shaking um, at the end of last year um, particularly as he's now 12 years old and the fact that the head shaking just came out of nowhere um, I'm really hoping that you know well I always felt like there must be a reason for that do you know what I mean like it wouldn't just come out of nowhere surely there was an injury or like disease or something like something causing it and up until this point we still have not found anything else whatsoever um, that could have triggered it and he was really good over winter but over summer um, now that it's heated up again he has started again with the head shakers not even close to as bad as it was the previous season but I have noticed it on a few of the hotter days um, but he has been really good like he goes and stands in his shelter um, and stays out of the sun so it's like he definitely knows um, that the sun is like bad and once he's in his shelter he's fine so at the moment we've been managing it quite well um, but yeah I'm really hoping that after tomorrow maybe there won't be any head shaking anymore so I will definitely let you guys know um, I've just got to go and put the float on now and get Fletch ready to go um, and I'll chat to you guys when we get to the hospital all right you guys so we did just get to the rehabilitation center this is where Fletch is going to have his surgery tomorrow um, it's a really like chill stable like they've got this kind of like stable complex you guys can see behind me there's beautiful Fletch right there um, and it is just like a very relaxed vibe so perfect perfect for him to just come in and just settle down straight away um, he has got a little bucket of feeds for the next few days um, his rugs are in this tub here just in case it gets cold but I don't think he's really going to need any rugs and he is in stable number six and at the moment he is just settling in he settled in very very well as you can see he just just munching his hay just doing what Fletch does so we'll go in hey mister and say hi to everyone hello hey getting yourself into trouble This door is really hard to close and I think I'll just leave it like that for now. Um, but yeah, so he's got quite the uh, situation going in here. He has got a whole thing of grass hay. He has got a little bit of meadow hay. Yeah, you do. In his little meadow hay. And then he also has his loose hay from home. And at the moment, he is pretty much just going swapping from hay bag to hay bag, taking like a little mouthful of each and just mixing it up. So he's pretty much enjoying uh, this so far, I think. 
and poor Mr. Fletch, he did actually try and say hello to his new neighbour, which is a really interesting pinto coloured horse. I'm not sure if that's a gelding or a mare right now, but I'm going to assume it's a mare because he did try and give her a little kiss through the bars before and there was a lot of squealing. So we're going to go with mare as the highest probability, I think. But um, yeah, Fletch has now moved on to the Lucent. It's pretty good. You like your Lucent, don't you? All right, guys, I'm going to drive home now and we will be back in the morning to see Fletch get prepped for surgery. Um, yeah. See you then. <laughs> All right, so these are Fletch's x-rays. We're gonna have a little bit look at some of the issues that he's got going on. Yeah, so what we're doing here is looking at the upper teeth. These are the front teeth at the top and they are showing signs of disease. People talk about root canal, so unfortunately, the root canal of this tooth and this tooth is opened, and it's now causing the tooth to rot away. And we'll show you an x-ray here. It's got a needle in it. Look at that, yeah, the needle's going down. Guys. Pretty amazing. Yeah, so this is, horses do suffer the same problems as, as we do, and unfortunately, this isn't a case where we can do a root canal. We have to now extract these teeth. So we're gonna extract one, two, three teeth. Yep, there's literally a needle, guys, in Fletcher's tooth. That's how big the hole is, so you can see he's definitely got a few issues going on and that tooth there is this funny little extra tooth and it kind of like bends around the other one so that is also you can probably see starting to be an issue too so that'll come out later but like Paul said these three are coming out today Here we go. This is pre-met. Oh well done Fletcher. Very good lad. Good boy. Go. <laughs> this is not that bad Fletch. There you go. Good boy. Okay, so we're going to just check out the rest of his body now, the heart on this side. It's all good. So the sedation is definitely kicking in now. Yeah, now just, you can now allow him to just relax. And he's got his little cushion here to stop him from getting any muscle soreness while he's leaning against it. The floppy, on there, I'll have a little look. The floppy lip is beginning. <laughs> Good boy, I know. These are the three teeth today that we're going to extract. Yeah. There's a little bit of a color change on the center and middle incisor, and that's because the root canal has already been compromised. There's a hole in these two teeth through the nerve. The nerve's dead now. So we'll just, um, what we're gonna do now is put some local anesthetic in. Even though we've got that nerve block, the main nerve block, we've got to get an extra anesthetic drug around the teeth because some of the nerves from this side will cross over yep. and give sensation to the other side. So you guys, I have just left Fletch. Um, he, I basically stayed up until he was like fully um, sedated and he'd have all of his pain relief. So he got a nerve block plus um, a bunch of local anesthetic in his gums, like pretty much all that for the entire mouth um, to make sure that he absolutely is not gonna feel anything. He had a heap of sedative, so he's also totally out of it as you guys could probably tell from the footage. Um, so yeah, I didn't, like I am one of those people that honestly like blood and gore and stuff just does not affect me at all. But because it's like my horse, I just feel like I just don't really wanna be there um, to watch Fletch kind of get cut into. Um, but yeah, uh, and I know he's in really good hands. So I feel like I've kind of sent him up, gave him a kiss goodbye, and I will be back in a few hours to see how he's going. So no joke, you guys. I have just gotten here. Fletcher's had a very successful operation. It has been about two hours since his operation, about three hours maybe, a little bit more, and he's already eating. <laughs> So, it's safe to say, I think it went pretty well. Um, he's already bouncing back, so I'm really, really happy to see that. 
looking this stuff. I haven't been game to look in his mouth yet though. Pletch will be here for a few days now, so I'll visit him again tomorrow and then I'll pick him up uh, in three days. I think someone's happy to be out of the stable. <laughs> oh god. You're supposed to be resting. Oh, he's naughty. Friend's very excited. You're exciting the little tic tac. Hey, me. Hello. Hey, you guys happy? You happy? You got your pledge back. Oh, grin. He's so handsome. <laughs> So Fletch has now been home for about three days now um, and he's doing so so well. I'm sure as you guys saw the girls were very excited to have him back as was I because it was honestly very weird not having him here. Um, so I am very happy that he's back home now um, and otherwise his recovery is going very very well. He's pretty much back to himself. He's eating lots. Um, he's doing really well. Um, I feel like he's really bounced back in the last couple of days especially he was a little quiet on the first day obviously feeling probably still a little tender um, and he's got a bit of aftercare that I have to do he's got like antibiotics he's got a mouthwash um, so I've got to clean his mouth out every day um, which he's been really good for all of those things which is awesome um, the one thing I will say is a few days ago we did see the tiniest bit of head shaking I'm not gonna lie I got pretty upset because obviously as you guys will know now I was really hoping that maybe this was the answer and this was gonna be the fix. Um, it's hard to know because it is still very very early so I feel like before I kind of like jump to any conclusions I probably just need to let him heal up. It is going to take about six to eight weeks for him to kind of recover and heal over and be completely back to normal. Um, but as you can imagine it was very disappointing and I just got yeah very upset. But again the teeth did have to come out. I wasn't just pulling them in, like oh maybe this will stop the head shakers. He has legitimate issues going on. Um, two of them, as I said, had infection, um, and the third one was um, affected by this um, disease that he has, unfortunately, with happening in his teeth. Um, so he may need to go back and get more teeth taken out, but we didn't want to do anything too drastic, so we just took the worst of the teeth out. And then we're going to reassess at the beginning of next year and just see what we need to do. But at the moment, I'd really like to see if he can just cope with the three out, and maybe that makes the difference. Um, but yeah, so it has been a bit tough. Um, but it's something we unfortunately had to do and I'm just glad to see that he's like getting back to normal pretty quickly. And I will say too, for those who are interested, I do have um, a little bit of footage and uh, photos from the actual, actual surgery, which I didn't want to include on this video because otherwise I'd be demonetized in a second and I have a lot of vet bills right now so like can't be doing that. So I thought maybe I'll put them over on Instagram if people are interested. Like I've kept his teeth as well. Um, and you can really see why they needed to come out when you look at them now. It's pretty crazy. So yeah, if you want to see that sort of stuff, I might put it on Instagram to see if I can get away with it over there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already because it does really, really help me out. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.